All right. Hello, everyone. It's Katie from the Clark Museum. And today we're going to be hearing from the Humboldt Farm Bureau about uh, their history. So as a reminder, this is part of our Humboldt History Symposium 2020. If you enjoyed this program or any of the other programs we're offering throughout the week, be sure to check out our website at clarkmuseum.org slash HHS. There you can find ways to help support this program and future Clark programs um, related to, of course, Humboldt County's history. So I'll turn it over to our presenters for today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. I'll keep an eye on it and I'll get everyone the questions at the end of the presentation. So here we go. And actually, I'm going to need the mouse really quick. Let me just flip it. There we go. Okay. There we go. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Gene Senestrero, and uh, I'm a member of the Humboldt County Farm Bureau Board. I've been a member there since 1951, so that I've just been elected on to my 70th year on the board of the Humboldt County Farm Bureau. First of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the museum for making this presentation possible. Uh, looking forward to putting out the information about how our organization got started and uh, where we are today, and uh, along with a number of photographs that it, uh, will illustrate what we're talking about, hopefully. Uh, Humboldt County was the first county in California to organize a county farm bureau. Uh, this was done in July of 1913. The University of California put out a, an offer saying that they, they would or organize a county farm bureau if, in other words, if they, if any county would organize a county farm bureau with at least one fifth of the farmers in the county in, in its membership, that the extent the university would put a, a farm advisor in that county. And Humboldt County was the first county in the state and one of the first counties in the nation act, actually to do this. In, in the fall of 1913, they organized and uh, Henry DeVoy was elected the first president and A.C. Noe was selected as the first uh, secretary. And an office was established at, in, at 321 G Street in Eureka. Uh, this was done with, with the agreement of the Eureka Development Association and uh, was funded by a number of organizations, including the Humboldt County Dairymen's Association. Uh, a young man from Ferndale by the name of Andrew, uh, Andy, they called him, Christensen, uh, who, who became the first farm advisor in Humboldt County. Now he had been an ag teacher in the Livermore area and was happy to come home to his, where he was born to uh, uh, become the first farm advisor in the county. <coughs> One might ask uh, why uh, these groups were so anxious to have a farm advisor come to Humboldt County. Well, in those, in those days, 1912, uh, uh, 13, 14, 15, the Humboldt County was one of the major agricultural counties in the state. Uh, there, was, there was some of the newspaper articles show that there was about eight, over 800 dairy, dairy farms in the county. And uh, the 1912 article talks about where Humboldt County stood in, in relation to agricultural production in, in the state of California. We were first in, in butter, uh, over 5 million pounds were produced, uh, first in butter fat sold, over 2 million pounds, second in the value of dairy products, uh, third in, in total milk product, uh, over 8 million gallons were, were produced. Sixth in the state in the value of wool and mohair. Sixth in the number of, of bearing apple trees. Uh, seventh in the number of sheep. Tenth in the number of cattle and so forth. So that's, that's the reason that Humboldt County was so important to, the, to agriculture in, in the county. The, the first uh, uh, 
mass meeting of the Humboldt County Farm Bureau was held in 1914 in uh, uh, Fort Seward. Thank you, in Fort Seward. And then how they got there, this was also the first year that the railroad came through in 1914. So they, they took advantage of that by, by riding uh, out to Fort Seward and uh, they were offered a, a round trip fare for $2.50. So quite a number of the Farm Bureau members took advantage of, of uh, this price to, to go out to, to uh, Fort Seward and, and have their first annual meeting. The uh, second annual meeting was held in Fortuna and uh, some of the uh, things that they did out there was have a demonstration of, of some of the tractors that were available in those days. They were actually tractors that were being built and sold in those, in those days. Uh, the next year, uh, 1915, the uh, hotel in Arcata offered to put on a, a, a dinner forum for their annual meeting and the, the charge was going to be 35 cents. So that's, that's quite a difference from what it is today, of course. <laughs> now, uh, these, uh, uh, when Farm Beer was for, first organized, uh, the, the way they, they did it was organizing uh, various groups in various parts of the county because the, it was much easier for the farm advisor to go out to these uh, remote areas rather than having them come in to Eureka or some other central location because the way the roads were in those days, it was not very easy for people to travel. So the farm advisor then would, would travel uh, to these, area, these other areas. And one of the things that we found in, in the Eureka Times Standard was in, in the in May of, of 2014, uh, this was an example of the way this, this worked, that the farm advisor went out to these various locations. And uh, all, every day in May of 1914, he was at a different uh, day. Uh, Arcata, Bayside, Petrolia, Garberville, Fort Seward, Blocksburg, and, and all uh, the other ways in between. Uh, <clears throat> Again, the next in 1915, the 16, the uh, the uh, uh, mass meeting was held in Arcata, and uh, again, the railroad provided the transportation for many people from South County to go to Arcata to take advantage of the 35 cent offer that was made by the hotel over there. <clears throat> I think now I'd like to introduce Catherine Zemer, our uh, office secretary, our executive director of Humboldt County Farm Bureau to fill us in on where Farm Bureau is today. Catherine. Train your places here. Okay, thank you, Jean. So we have a little bit of history on agriculture. Now we're gonna have a little present day agriculture. Um, this is a picture in Arcata of some fields that were just cut for hay. Um, a lot of our land in Humboldt County is grass that's growing because of our wet winters. And we were able to harvest the hay and put it in the barns for the cattle in the winter time. This is one of the pictures in Ferndale where they're harvesting hay and putting it in in June and July so they can have it for the winter time for their animals. In Humboldt County, we raise a lot of quinoa lately. Um, quinoa is like a grain. Uh, it's from Bolivia originally and it only grows in a climate that's under 80 degrees. And in California, it's hard to find fields that will not go above an 80 degree temperature. But in Blue Lake, Arcata, Ferndale, Lolita, Riadel area on the outskirts of Riadel and Alton, there's over 800 acres of quinoa. And um, this is a new product generally for Humboldt County and it's been a very successful product for some of our um, planters. 
I like that. <laughs> we have a lot of beef cattle. Um, the beef cattle are grazed in the fields outside the areas, uh, in the outlying areas, uh, rural part of Humboldt County. And there's a lot of families that have been Humboldt County for many generations raising beef cattle. Here's another picture of some beef cattle. Just This is about July. You can see how green the grass is even at that time. Humboldt County has a lot of dairy. Um, our dairy animals in the Ferndale Arcata bottom area. This, this family is John Bavoda and his family. They were honored as the agriculturalist of the year for Humboldt County Farm Bureau. So this is um, his area in Ferndale. Farm Bureau has a lot of educational programs at meetings, we learn about what each other, what they're doing on their production. This is Ginger Sarvinsky's area in Pepperwood called the Corn Crib, and she gave our Farm Bureau a tour. Here's her corn crib, the best corn in the world you get in Pepperwood um, in the fall. Another one of our tours went to Green Diamond quite a few years ago, and uh, this is our Farm Bureau Board of Directors on a Green Diamond tour. We went to the Clendenin Cider because Cliff Clendenin is a member of the Humboldt County Farm Bureau. And this was our group meeting, learning about the apples in Humboldt County and the cider works. Humboldt County was fortunate to celebrate our 100th anniversary in 1913. And this is our group of board of directors on our one day celebration at the Samoa Cookhouse. So we had a variety of historical displays and things that the Samoa Cookhouse people could look at and learn more about the history and present day agriculture. We had a nice dinner there to celebrate the 100 years. Um, it wasn't quite the same as our first um, anniversary that we held at Fort Seward, which had 2,500 people. We had close to 150, so a little smaller crowd. Here's some of the people enjoying the speakers. We had the uh, president of the American Farm Bureau Federation come be our speaker because we were the first uh, Farm Bureau in California. So we are getting honored by that. Some of the Farm Bureau things are social and this was our pie contest. And we had about 20 pies entered in the contest and these were the, the five winning pies from the Farm Bureau members. Farm Bureau supports the Dairy Princess contest which these girls are trained to do public speaking in schools and in uh, service organizations about our local dairy industry. At our 100th anniversary, we had some activities, a catapult contest, um, the pie baking and some other events. And then we also had a large display at the Humboldt County Farm Bureau. And this was a uh, hotel Fort Seward that we went on our very first anniversary. This actually has burnt down, but this was where the Farm Bureau went for their first anniversary. And this was a train station where everyone arrived at the train station. Um, like I said, that year is 2,500 people this year to go to Fort Seward. We had about 45 people make the trip. So obviously taking the train was better. Farm Bureau does a lot of activities that help members and some are Board of Supervisors, Planning Commission, and this is when our 100th anniversary we were uh, received a resolution for that. Some other um, awards we received from the State of California Farm Bureau's award ceremony. This is some things that our directors received. And we honor our members. This was Marty McClellan was honored for his years of service, especially on our land use committee. And uh, once a year we have an annual dinner and we talk about the goals for the Farm Bureau and activities that we want to work on. Farm Bureau does a lot for education. That's one of our main goals. And here's Marianne Renner at South Bay School with one of her calves. The calf is Oreo. And of course, it's a Holstein calf, black and white. The kids love to see farm animals. And we like to talk to the students about what's going on locally in agriculture. The Farm Bureau sponsors a lot of things with College of the Redwoods, trying to help those students learn more about what's available in Humboldt County, what options they have, and trying to match some of those with the current producers, seeing if they could work together. And Farm Bureau does a lot of just public relations. These are two very large um, cutouts that we have in the Ferndale area to depict the dairy industry and the people that work in the dairy industry, um, just giving a positive image for agriculture. So we have quite a scholarship program and I'm gonna turn it back over to Jean Sanistero to tell you a little bit about our college scholarships. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Thank you, Catherine. Yes, we are very proud of our scholarship program. We think we have one of the best scholarship programs in the state and perhaps even in the nation. Uh, back about 25 years ago, the board decided that they would like to try to start some kind of a scholarship program. So we, we had a few uh, money raising activities. One of the first ones that I recall was a, a small polenta fee that we had in Arcata. And then we had various other small uh, money raising activities trying to raise money to start this a scholarship program. And a, a committee was appointed and uh, I happened to have been chosen as chairman and I've been chairman of the scholarship committee ever since. And uh, one of the members, original members of our scholarship committee was a lady by the name of Lynette Russo. She and her husband uh, had a beef cattle ranch up in the Newland area. And she was very active uh, on our scholarship committee. And, and uh, a few years later, she unfortunately passed away. And uh, in her, her estate, the way she, obviously the, she had a great feeling for, for, for the Far Farm Bureau Scholarship Program. And uh, she left a million and fifty thousand dollars to our scholarship fund. And that was a, the start, really the start of our, our scholarship fund. And so we, our major scholarship is the Russo Scholarship, obviously named after Henry and Lynette Russo. And each year we give away uh, about uh, in the neighborhood of $90,000 uh, between the Russo scholarship and the, what later became the Paddock scholarship. Now this is a scholarship that was uh, again, uh, donated uh, in, in, by the estate of, of a gentleman, a young gentleman by the name of Paddock from a Paddock family up in the Newland area. And uh, this was another almost a million dollars. And so this became the Paddock Fund. And uh, the Lusso Fund is uh, anyone, uh, uh, any student that graduating from a Humboldt County High School is eligible to apply for the Russo Scholarship. The Paddock, Paddock Scholarship, the board decided that it would only be offered to students of members of the Humboldt County Farm Bureau. So obviously that ha this has become uh, an, a, a real uh, incentive for people to join Farm Bureau who are not actually farmers because they would be, their, student, their students would become eligible then for the Paddock Scholarship. And uh, each, each year we, we uh, send out applica applications for these scholarships. And then we, we have a number of other smaller scholarships that have been established by various members of, of our board of directors uh, in their estates. Uh, among these would be the Gene Whitney Scholarship, which goes to people that are interested in the forestry industry and uh, the Ike Moxon uh, Scholarship, which would go to people that are interested that come from the Arcata area. And uh, we also carry uh, our, our scholarship winners for the four years, uh, provided they keep up their, their uh, studies in, in the various colleges that are att attending and uh, then reapply. And we are able to, to provide uh, these scholarships for four, four years, which is very unusual for scholarship programs. And each year we, we try to bring in uh, the scholarship winners. And uh, this is a picture of one, one of the years. And uh, this gives us an opportunity for the people to meet other, other scholarship winners and also provides a, a wonderful opportunity to publicize our scholarship program. As I said before, we, we think we're very fortunate to have a tremendous scholarship program. It's a vital part of our uh, scholarship uh, support and uh, we're very excited and, and, uh, and hopefully this will continue on because the board is, 
uh, has determined that they only want to spend the income from these funds. And so this, this will continue uh, on in per perpetuity. Uh, one of the surprises that we had a few years ago when we actually received a contribution from someone who had won a scholarship in our some of our earlier years. So this uh, certainly was a recognition that that people that receive these scholarships are very uh, uh, thankful and and uh, they are in a position to su provide support. They, they obviously want want to do that. So again, we're very proud of our scholarship program and we thank the people that have supported us and, and, and hopefully will continue to support us. So I'm back and we're going to talk a little bit about the Redwood Region Resource Rally. The Farm Bureau established a program to try and encourage students going to high school at a junior and senior level to consider a vocation in the agricultural industry or the forestry industry. And so the Farm Bureau joined with several other organizations and we put together a one day field trip went to Scotia, California, and spent the day with um, instructors, resource professionals, and people in the field. What we tried to do was include juniors and seniors in high school that are interested in a vocational, um, a vocational um, opportunity. So we featured all types of jobs in the agricultural industry and the dairy industry. Um, we brought students in from out of the um, Humboldt County area. We were hoping for about 35 students the first year, and we ended up with 250. So that was a little bit of a surprise. They came from Petaluma all the way to Crescent City and every high school in between. Um, teachers and students were looking for something that they could learn more about the resource um, opportunities in Northern California. The students were um, brought by vans to Scotia, and then we were able to use school buses to transport them around the town of Scotia. And we had 10 different stations where they would go for about a ha uh, half an hour to learn um, about forestry. Um, they had a fisheries exhibit. There were uh, things for timber harvest plans, logging. We had a special that it was to teach them about how to um, apply for a job, how to do a job interview, what kind of college scholarships are available, um, all different type aspects. And they would sign up ahead of time, get into groups and be transported around the town of Scotia. This is a picture at lunch where we had all the students at lunch at the Scotia Fireman's um, Park. Um, we provided lunch for everyone and this was the group picture. It was pretty impressive that all these students were so interested. I was telling the teachers before we started and it was my thought that we wouldn't want them to be spending any time on their phone. And I was instructed by the teachers that the phones were opportunity for them to take photos of what a great opportunity this was and share it with the other students at school. And the following year, we had even more students wanting to come to the event. This was held in Scotia in September. This year, because of the pandemic, we are not able to have an in-person resource rally. So we're doing a Zoom resource rally where the students will be watching all of the um, professionals talk about their job. And we tell them to tell us all the things you like about your job and also tell the students what might be things that may not be your favorite part because these students need to know everything about a job. They need to know what is the positive and what might be the negative. So they're prepared when they apply for and try to get these jobs. We also explain to them what kind of college education they need, what kind of skills they want to have, and how to work your way up in a, a company. This resource rally, I applied for a award from the American Farm Bureau and we were at the national winner for a new and innovative program. So Humboldt County Farm Bureau, we sent two representatives to Austin, Texas 
in January of 2019, right before the pandemic. And at that convention, we had a booth set up to explain to all the people from the other parts of the United States about a resource rally to encourage students to consider a vocation and a two-year training or even an in-house training for their career options. There's a lot of recruiters out looking for students to go to a college and four years or even five years at college can be quite expensive. And there are alternatives in our community for people that would like to work as a vocational um, job, working their way up through a company. So we're real proud of this program. At um, Austin, Texas, we put out a display. We had all the people from different states. I think the most interesting part was when people would see the big log truck picture in the middle, other states don't have logs like we have. Um, they even don't have logging trucks like we have. And, and more people looked at the size of the logs and the kind of program that we're putting on to try and get students to consider, consider jobs in agriculture and in the timber industry. So I want to introduce Donna Moxon, who's going to have some more. Oh, yes, please. There's Jean Sinistro. I wanted to mention the variety of, of uh, agriculture that we had in this county during the period of, of the, when the Farm Bureau first started, uh, talking about apples, berries, potatoes, vegetables for seed, and others. And one of the interesting things that we found was a picture of a tobacco being grown over on the Samoa Peninsula. Do, do we have that picture? No. Anyway, this was uh, really jumped out at us because we knew there was a variety of agriculture being grown, but we certainly did not realize that tobacco was also one of the crops that was being raised. And they made uh, cigars and used for, for pipe tobacco. Donna, it's yours. <laughs> thank you, Jean. And thank you, everyone. I'm uh, Donna Moxon. I uh, was a, a member of the Farm Bureau Board for some time and active with Jean in past uh, history presentations, agricultural presentations, and with all the folks involved in the centennial for Humboldt County Farm Bureau and of course, agricultural extension in our area in, um, uh, in 2013. It was an exciting experience. We presented a lot of programs and if we, we wanted to take a little bit of a different track on this particular program because we do have various history um, presentations that are available for you. So currently we're working on a section of history from um, from essentially the middle the middle of the of the um, past century from say the 1940s to about 1980s and that's one of our projects that will be presented here in the future. But if you're looking for anything about agricultural history prior to 1913, and of course through, um, through about 1926, we, there are presentations that have been recorded and are, um, and are available for you um, at the Humboldt County Library when they're open again. Certainly um, this program and others will be available um, here through the Clark Museum. The Humboldt County Historical Society has um, information and, um, and uh, Society of Humboldt Pioneers of which I'm a president and Jean's a member and I think Catherine's eligible also. Um, we've had a number of, of presentations. So we, we welcome any questions that you may have. Um, um, uh, just a little bit of, uh, of information. I wanna leave this up for a little bit. This is the contact information. You can reach Catherine, uh, Humboldt County Farm Bureau Executive Director at HumboldtFB at sbcglobal.net. Um, and certainly visit the Humboldt County Farm Bureau website. 
um, that's listed here on the screen. Now, Humboldt County Farm Bureau also has a Facebook page. So if you happen to lose this information and you're on Facebook, you can look up Humboldt County Farm Bureau and you can reach Catherine through that as the Humboldt County or Society of Humboldt Pioneers also has a Facebook page. And if you would have any questions of me and or of Society of Humboldt Pioneers, please, um, please visit uh, the Facebook page and we'll be happy to get back to you on that. Um, this, we really appreciate all that the Clark Museum and the historical societies and the genealogical societies and the museums um, and everyone throughout Humboldt County for their support during this time. And, and thank you all for the Humboldt County um, History Symposium as a means to keep us connected and get the information out. And of course, uh, you've heard this from uh, a lot of folks I know, and we'd like to just uh, reiterate it for the agricultural community um, that now is certainly the time to support our farmers and ranchers um, and the, the small farms. And we encourage you to buy local. Um, be it agricultural products or, or any Humboldt made products because now we definitely as always need one another and it would certainly be a support. I would like to thank um, again the Clark Museum, um, the many, many diverse and individuals and organizations who have assisted us throughout the past uh, 15 years or so that we've been working on these history programs. Um, and I really would like to mention the, the Clark Museum, the Humboldt County Historical Society, the Humboldt County Library, the Humboldt Room is, a, is an excellent resource, as well as the library at um, Humboldt State University and all of the employees and volunteers of these organizations who've been so helpful in all of our searches. So I'm going to turn this back now to Katie and see Katie if we have any questions that we can answer. Uh, so, so, right. so you've mentioned, if you wanna say it. All right. Or any of you guys want to answer? Um, so you've mentioned that you guys have done other history programs, and right now you're working on researching about the 1940s to the 40s through the eight into the 80s. Okay. So do you want to share any of the stuff you've found so far, or is it very new still? Well, I have a file that I've been sort of dumping things in. Um, you know, when it, when you're doing research, sometimes you can get yourself into a, a dark hole because you it, it's very easy to get sidetracked. And so I'm one of those that <laughs> love those bright, shiny objects. I have to follow that around. Um, I found some really fun uh, newspaper articles. So I don't have anything right now that I can really show you, but I'm putting together um, the history and some additional information from some of those articles. Um, and, and the fun part for me is I've been able to trace some of the people that I haven't seen in a long, long time or some that have passed on who have, who have given so much to agriculture throughout their life in Humboldt County. And we just wanna make that available for others to see. And so you've done, sounds like you've done other presentations, video presentations and things like that. Do you guys have any like books or anything that you've written up or um, anything like that? Books? Uh, no, actually we haven't, um, okay. but, but, we, uh, but we would be happy to give a presentation <laughs> to anyone or organizations if you are interested in um, and like I said, we can tailor it to any particular part of history, essentially, because certainly agriculture was here from 1854 or before, and, um, and we want it to continue, yeah. so that's great. <laughs> One of the things, Katie, I didn't mention is if anyone is interested in Farm Bureau membership, um, I don't know, we can't see, no, oh, never okay. mind, here we go. Well, 
I have a package or a packet of information. So if anyone's interested in Farm Bureau membership and as Catherine and Jean both alluded to the scholarships, um, just contact Catherine and she'll be happy to get that information out. So I, I'd forgotten to mention it earlier, <laughs> but yes, um, um, like I said, contact Catherine or and or you can reach me through um, through the uh, Society of Humboldt Pioneers Facebook page, or, and um, we're happy to get get a program to you or to any organization. And so, so I, I did an exhibit on um, Humboldt County Industries uh, over a year ago now, but. Um, do any of y'all know much about Humboldt County potatoes in terms of that history? Jean, do you want to talk about potatoes? <laughs> we, we had a lot of potatoes in Arcata Bottom <laughs> and in McKinleyville and in Ferndale. And I just remember everyone talking about when I was very young about those potatoes and they were going for potato chips. And I was going like, yes, let's make sure we get a lot of those chips. So I'll let Jean give you the history. All right. <clears throat> yes, back in the olden days, there was a lot of uh, uh, eating potatoes grown in, in Humboldt County. I just read recently and they, they shipped them by, by um, boat, obviously, to, the, to San Francisco. And apparently there's some uh, area in San Francisco Bay that's marked as one, where one of the ships loaded with Humboldt County potatoes actually went down and were lost. And in later years, uh, this would be during the uh, old 50s, early 60s, uh, Humboldt County was in, a, in a, a period of time when they were growing uh, Kennebec potatoes, which are a potato that was developed in, in Maine, uh, primarily for potato chips. And so this was a fairly large industry um, for about 15 years in Humboldt County, growing Kennebec uh, variety potatoes for the chip market. Oh. And do you know, like, so you said it lasted about 15 years, do you know what happened that it kind of died out or uh, yeah i think I, I really don't know exact uh, exactly what happened uh, whether the market actually uh, but uh, but these potatoes needed to be rotated so i think probably one of the things that happened was they was just ran out of, uh, of new ground to plant these potatoes oh. because they definitely had to be rotated they couldn't be planted year after year in the same same area so uh, it was it was two two benefits of growing uh, these potatoes. One was that the, the land was farmed for these potatoes, which allowed it to be well farmed so that they could reseed uh, the clover and grass, which are the main. Uh, this was the reason one of the reasons Humboldt County was so good uh, for a long time was because we had water to grow grass and. and and clover, which are the two mainstays of, of dairy and, and uh, beef cattle product, beef and sheep cattle production. And do you know much about um, like the sheep history of Humboldt County? Cecile's family was a sheep farmer and yes. I know it was very big up here. Yeah, the sheep uh, industry in Humboldt County has uh, changed dramatically. We were uh, very highly uh, rated in, in in the state for sheep for many many years, but now uh, I believe there's only really only one sheep le uh, ranch left in the county that actually uh, makes a living with with sheep. So we've changed. Obviously, the wool market has gone gone. Uh, so there's not very prof profitable, and, and the sheep industry just has not been able to compete with with the dairy industry and the beef cattle industry in this county. So you'd say dairy and beef are probably the two biggest, or yes, by yeah. far, the dairy and and, and uh, beef are the two biggest. Uh, uh, as we have another crop that's come on here in the later years, mm -hmm. that certainly has has you know put their hand in the in that picture also, but uh, primarily it's been dairy and beef. Okay, very cool. Does anyone else have anything else they want to add in? 
All right, so thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for presenting. Uh, we'll be wrapping up today's presentation. Of course, uh, thank you for tuning in everyone. And if you wanna see this presentation as a recording, of course, it'll be up on our Facebook really quick after this presentation ends. It'll also be available on our YouTube um, in a couple days. So keep an eye out for that. And of course you can see what upcoming presentations we have going on on our website, clarkmuseum.org slash HHS. There are still plenty of seats available for our keynote on Friday. So be sure to pick up your ticket on the website there. You can also order a pickup dinner. The orders for those end today at five. So thank you again, everyone. And we will see you around next time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.